So this talk is, does the twin paradox uh, break Einstein's relativity? I found an interesting video uh, entitled Einstein twins paradox breaks relativity. There is no solution. Um, I usually go through and criticize videos by people who believe in Einstein's relativity, but this is a particularly good video criticizing Einstein's relativity. And I would like to go through it making comments. So let's start. Most of the twins paradox explanations go through a similar scenario to this where one twin is on the earth and the other is in a spaceship. The problem with this is that it leads you to easily dismiss the first postulate of Einstein's special relativity. It is called the principle of relativity and it requires that both of these scenarios that you're seeing are equally valid. It is easier for people to understand that the twin on the Earth is actually at rest and the spaceship is doing all of the moving. But the scenario where the planet and the star are moving and the spaceship is at rest should not be discarded. Otherwise, why have the principle of relativity at all if you're always going to discard one of the scenarios? I prefer the scenario where you just have empty space Okay, and then spaceships move relative to each other, uh, being able to treat either as stationary with other moving relative to them. So let's continue. But you might be thinking that the twin paradox is not a paradox at all, or it's already been solved. This is just a small list of peer-reviewed journal papers by physicists trying to explain the twins paradox. Obviously you can see that there are different methods being used to try to explain it, and the debate is still ongoing. Yes, but unfortunately, uh, from the point of view of relatives, that is people who believe in special relativity, they, they probably think they can explain the twin paradox uh, by different ways. So from their point of view, it's not really an ongoing debate, uh, other than pointing out there's different ways that the twin paradox can be s solved. Anyway, carrying on. So back to the scenario, we have empty space and this spaceship is moving at a fast rate to the left. You're going to see that it is passing another spaceship that is sitting at rest. Sorry, just kidding. This is the spaceship that is at rest and then you're going to see another one fly by. There it goes. It's the same animation either way. So that's the idea of the principle of relativity. You can't tell which one is at rest or which one is moving. So both reference frames have a valid point of view in this case. That's okay, so carrying on. Let's take a look at Einstein's 1905 paper and what he says about the principle of relativity. Einstein is proposing to get rid of this idea of a universal at rest. And now any coordinate system 
can claim that they are at rest as long as they meet the criteria of constant motion or no motion. Coordinate systems that are accelerating or decelerating do not apply to the principle of relativity. At the start of section 2, Einstein again defines the principle of relativity. I put up a second translation here because the wording is kind of clumsy. Okay, that's good enough. And I don't think it's worth dissecting it any further than that. So carrying on. So in one of the scenarios, this spaceship was at rest. We will assign it a time equals two. That way we can calculate what the moving spaceship's clock looked like. So to the stationary spaceship, it looked like the moving spaceship's clock was slower. Okay, there's no problem at this point. But using the principle of relativity, we can say that this spaceship was at rest and this one was moving. So we have a rest time of two, and now this one has a clock that is moving slower. This is the basic clock paradox, and this is the beauty of the principle of relativity. It's very symmetric, but it creates an illogical contradiction. Which clock is actually moving slower? Okay, as for this logical inconsistency, uh, often can't get the relatives uh, to accept that this is logical inconsistency because they invent excuses to work around it. Now some explanations just say who cares it's a disagreement about clocks. So, I wish you hadn't said that because the situation is some people don't care, but there are other people that do care. And it seems to be that most relativists just want to ignore this logical inconsistency and carry on. And they just seem to accept it as a feature of the theory. Now this is where the twins come in. What you do is you replace the clocks, you make it a little bit more serious by putting in a biological clock. So now you can say, wait a second, if it's two twins, how do they age if both clocks are moving slower? As for this uh, issue of biological clocks, I dispute that biological clocks work the same way as man-made clocks uh, because Einstein wants the man-made clocks to be synchronized in a certain way, uh, which is now called Einstein's, Einstein's synchronization. So it seems a big unfounded assumption to think uh, biological clocks would work the same way. But anyway, the video does not go into that issue so let's stick to the video and assume for the video that all clocks work the same way because that seems to be what mainstream assumes it makes no logical sense to say that both twins are aging slower at the same time Okay, assuming biological clocks and non-biological clocks work the same way. So this is how simple the twins paradox really is. 
you don't need to go into some complex scenario. All you're doing is just making a slow clock seem a little bit more real. Now, there's no solution to this. Uh, believers in special relativity would disagree with that. It's not their point of view. And as he points out, coming next, uh, special relativity believers would talk around this issue. But Einsteiners will explain their way out of pretty much anything. Okay, I'll continue. He's admitted that uh, special relativity believers would talk their way, would talk their way out of things like that. So the next logical step would be to say, hey, we have a valid math answer from the relativity equations right here and right here. So two valid math answers, they both can't be right. So which math answer is the correct one? Again, the first postulate of Einstein's relativity is the principle of relativity, and it is giving us all of this information. So let's look at this in a different way. Let's go down one more layer and just ask, well, who is really doing the moving? Einstein's relativity has math that depends on velocity. For example, in order to calculate these clocks, we need to know who is actually moving. They depend on a speed. And right now, the principle of relativity is telling us that they're both at rest and they're both moving. That is an obvious logical contradiction. It's a problem, but as pointed out, uh, special relativity believers are going to try to talk, talk around problems like that. So let's just look at this as a velocity paradox. Here are the relativity equations that are applied to the coordinate system that is moving. This is the time coordinate or clock and this is x, y, and z of the moving system. This is where the slower moving clock comes from and it requires a velocity. So the first postulate of the principle of relativity says that you can be at rest or you can be the moving frame. But we have specific math for the moving frame. That is the paradox and the special relativity theory itself does not have a resolution for it. Um, by relativity, uh, they are both moving and not moving. Uh, can't distinguish constant velocity motion from being at rest uh, from whether it's moving. It, I have two spaceships and empty space and nothing to use as reference and the sh ships are moving at a constant velocity apart uh, then can treat either than the stationary a constant velocity motion is relative uh, special relativity believers as noted try to talk around problems like this it doesn't tell you which one is moving so you get the two slowing clock paradox or the aging twins issue. And now you know that it gives you two different answers, but doesn't tell you which one is correct. So in special relativity, you can't have each frame claiming that they're moving and not moving. It just doesn't work. It is absolutely a logical contradiction or paradox. Yeah, as I previously noted by relativity, 
can have them both is moving and not moving and it's not treated as a logical inconsistency or anything like that it's just accepted uh, constant velocity motion is relative and not absolute it has not been resolved Um, rather than not resolved, it is more a case of just accepted as a feature of how things are. The theory has that. So here we have an example of Einstein's mind virus. The theory declares a symmetrical relationship, but this theory requires asymmetry in order to resolve the clock paradox. Yes, uh, when you have constant velocity motion, it's symmetric. But in order to get asymmetry, you have to break the constant velocity situation. And you usually break it by saying there is an acceleration or some other factor involved. Uh, as noted if not earlier, special relativity believers have to make excuses like that. Or to figure out who is actually moving faster. Symmetry and asymmetry are exact opposites, so both of these cannot be correct. And, and that's not how it is. Both are accepted as correct. Uh, as I repeat, what happened is co constant velocity motion gives symmetry. And then it's taken that there's something that breaks the symmetry to give asymmetry. So why does Einstein's theory have the principle of relativity if you're always trying to get rid of it to resolve these paradoxes. Um, exactly. That's what happens. You get rid of it. You start off from a situation of symmetry and then you want to uh, move to a situation where there's asymmetry. So I prefer to say uh, some excuses given to move from the symmetry situation to make it a uh, asymmetry situation. Most of the twins explanations have this workaround built in. Many times the explanations try to invalidate a frame. And what that means is one of the frames will claim to be influenced by gravity or acceleration deceleration which means it does not apply to special relativity. That invalidated frame is then said to be the one that is moving. Another common workaround is to explicitly say or agree which frame is at rest. This way is a little sneaky. Okay, in the way I like to think of it, it's a moving goalpost. You start from a symmetry situation and then the goalposts are moved to get an asymmetry situation. And Wikipedia explains what moving goalpost means here. This is a quote from it. Moving the goalpost is a metaphor uh, derived from goal-based sports that means to change the situation or goal of a process or competition. So in this case of relativity, we're starting from a symmetry situation and then moving the goalposts and moving to a situation where there is asymmetry. Right. And 
moving goalposts seems to be treated by special relativity believers as an acceptable way to do things for some reason. Uh, they don't seem to want to acknowledge that they're moving goalposts and that's probably because moving goalposts is usually deemed an invalid process. But that's what they're doing. They're moving from a symmetry situation to an asymmetry situation and it's going, doing it by moving goalposts. Uh, now the next video part of the video seems to make the mistake of uh, thinking what he points out about relative, special relativity invalidates special relativity. Here at how to go about invalidating Einstein's principle of relativity. Uh, no, it does not invalidate special relativity because special relativity believers move goalposts. If, if, you, if you could get the special relativities to admit that they should to not move in goalposts, and they might then accept that what has been talked about here invalidates special relativity, but they move goalposts and they won't accept this sort of invalidation of special relativity. But what it's really doing is kind of bringing back the idea of absolute space. Uh, yes, but getting most uh, special relativity believers to accept that that's what, what they've done is quite difficult. Or the relativity theory that was prior to Einstein, they used the ether as the at rest reference frame in the universe. So again, if you're going to use these types of workarounds to invalidate a frame or declare who is moving and who is at rest, then why do we even have the first postulate in Einstein's theory of relativity? He's calling it workarounds. I call it moving goalposts. Uh, you start from the situation of not knowing who is moving, and that is the symmetry case. And then the goalposts are moved, uh, decide who is moving, and that breaks the symmetry, and that makes it asymmetry. Uh, that is what the special relativity, relativity believers are doing, but they seem to have difficulty expressing and admitting that is what they're doing. The answer to that is because it is used in section two of his paper when he tries to define something called relative simultaneity. Now this is where the actual bug in Einstein's theory lives. In a future video I will be doing a walkthrough that shows you exactly how to invalidate the entire theory of relativity via relative simultaneity. And thanks for watching. So, okay, that's the end of the video, and he's going to carry on uh, attacking special relativity in another video. But back to the question, does the twin paradox break Einstein's relativity, uh, special relativity that is, and the answer is no, because goalposts get moved. Moving goalposts is invalid process, really but special relativity believers use it whether they want to admit that's what they're doing. They use it and that stops their theory from being invalidated because you can move the goalposts to some change things. So thank you and that's it, the end. Bye for this time.